UK, we love chocolate. Last year, in 2010, we ate over 650,000 tons of it, and the industry was worth approximately 3.2 billion pounds. During the economic downturn of the late 2000s, chocolate was widely reported to be recession-proof, as sales boomed and profits soared. Now, with our appetite for chocolate showing no signs of slowing, the demand for cocoa, chocolate's base ingredient, is forecast to eventually outstrip supply, and this means the chocolate industry could in fact be heading towards a crisis. One business entering into this uncertain future is Sir Hans Sloan Chocolate. Founded in 2010 by world-class chocolatier Bill McCarrick, the company have their sights set firmly on the high-end luxury market. From a warehouse in Surrey, Bill and just four others supply handcrafted chocolate bars, pralines and truffles to select upmarket retailers, including Harrods and Selfridges. We spent some time with Hans Sloan to get a feel for what it's actually like behind the scenes of a real chocolate factory. My name is Bill McCarrick and I'm the master chocolatier at Sir Hans Sloan Chocolate. With over 30 years experience, Bill McCarrick knows good chocolate. My father was a, a butcher and he was supplying meats and sausages to area restaurants and I was a delivery boy. And then from there I was able to work with a really good pastry chef in America who inspired me to go to Europe. Helping in the kitchen today is Julio Tiza and 21-year-old culinary school graduate Dan Ellis. Well, the best thing is that basically my job is to spend all day playing chocolate, so I would really say there is a bad thing in that. Um, but again, the hours, I would suppose, you've got to be quite motivated and prepared to work them sort of hours. And, you know, because you could be working anywhere from six, and, you know, we say that's our time from six till five now, but if we get really busy and orders are, you know, fast and furious, if you like, then we could be working till eight, maybe even later than that. As well as tending to admin and product development, Bill's wife, Marianne, makes the long hours easier to bear with breakfast and lunch that she prepares fresh every day. I probably spend more time here than do at home with my girlfriend, which she probably doesn't really like, but still. Um, I mean, we come in, we are sort of like talk about the day ahead, things that we should be doing, priorities. We have breakfast, lunch, you know, it's quite nice, you know, social. Again, it's like a second family, so having that work environment like that, you're not just a number. So a small run business like this, you're part of a team, which is quite tight and, um, you know, you look after each other, so. The reason why we use Sir Hans Sloan as a name for the company is, Hans Sloan is a hero in the chocolate world. Hans Sloan was born in 1660, at a time when scientists like Isaac Newton were seeking order in the natural world and voyages of discovery were opening up new environments to Europeans. As a child in Ireland, Sloan became a keen observer of nature his interests eventually took him to study botany and chemistry in London and then to France where he received his doctorate of physics. Now a learned man, Sloan accepted an offer to travel to Jamaica as physician to the new governor, the second Duke of Albemarle. While in Jamaica, the locals introduced Sloan to a rudimentary hot chocolate made from cocoa and water. He reportedly found it nauseating but soon devised a means of mixing it with milk which he found much more to his liking. When Sloan returned to England with the recipe, it was initially sold as a medicine, but by the 19th century, the Cadbury brothers were selling tins of Sloan's drinking chocolate. Today, Hans Sloan are at Chocolate Week 2011 in London's Borough Market. Each year, the event plays host to a selection of top British chocolatiers and chocoholics alike. Hans Sloan are using the event to unveil their brand new chocolate collaboration, which features a rather unorthodox ingredient. When the pastry chef from Coworth Park came to our chocolate studio, had a chance to see the crunching process, he said to me, can I put something from the grounds of our resort there, such as mushrooms, herbs, spices, and then he said, why not hay? The customer reaction has been one of, wow, I've never heard of that before, which nobody has. It smells of a middling dark chocolate. It doesn't smell of hay at all. It's quite a fruity uh, aroma. Quite a nice flavour actually. The flavour's coming away now as I'm eating it. I would never have guessed it was hay though. I never would have thought of hay as a cooking ingredient. And I'm not sure why they did, but it's really interesting. 
<laughs> Why not? <laughs> the attendees seemed to like Bill's Hey Chocolate, but we wondered what world-renowned critic and Academy of Chocolate Awards judge Martin Christie had to say. Uh, quite fruity, quite refreshing sweetness to it. Um, it's actually re remarkably sweet. Um, and uh, almost like uh, berries or raspberries or something, or cranberry. It's amazingly not how I'd ex expect hay to taste at all. And very smooth and nice, quite thick texture. Good mouthfeel. Um, amazingly palatable. PR stunt or not, Hans Sloan say they plan to release a line of hay chocolate soon following the positive reviews. It sounds like Hans Sloan found a safe niche in upmarket chocolate. So we asked Bill if he could show us where he sources his cocoa from. This is the plantation in Panama where cocoa is growing from. And I have some really nice photos here. And in these photos you can see the actual tree with the pods of cocoa growing right up the trunk of the tree. So you can see the beginnings of the cocoa pod. And there's twice a year where there's a harvest happening. And Fernando Alonso in Panama cutting by hand. And then during the harvest, they're all put in a big central file. And it's very ceremonial. The whole family and village get together, hack open the cocoa. You can see it's a very pulpy, mango steam, sweet, not at all as we know it to be as chocolate. And then scraped out and then put into sacks where it's left to ferment. As the sugars break down, it turns into alcohol, so very much like winemaking. From there, it goes into these all homemade little tarmacs and rolling out uh, shields that it's dry in the sun. And that will take another five to seven days. Isn't that wonderful? From that section, it's roasted as Merlot is doing and then it's actually ground. Well, then you're left with what is known as the cocoa paste. And that's how Sir Hans Sloan chocolates receive the goods. As proud as Bill may be, the cocoa he imports does not comply with fair trade standards. The Fair Trade Foundation say they campaign for better prices, conditions and terms of trade for farmers and workers in the developing world. So why isn't Bill jumping on the bandwagon? When we were sourcing cocoa, one of the areas we looked at was fair trade and organic. And it's a really, it's, it's a time bomb if you ask it me personally, because you have a situation where a lot of this cocoa is growing in areas where the control over the standards and the accreditation of the cocoa uh, can be compromised. I know it's a very risky thing for me to say, but this is something I learned in that process. But for fine chocolates, like fine wine, you have to start with the best ingredients. And that generally comes from uh, South American countries or Madagascar or Papua New Guinea, um, where they're growing varieties of cacao which are superior to the bulk varieties grown in, in Africa. Those generally command a higher price. You need to look after that cacao and grow it correctly. Um, that's about paying farmers a good price and having good quality control. Fair trade doesn't really fit so well with that model um, because the price they're paying is over the fair trade price anyway. So it seems that fair trade isn't for everyone, especially chocolatiers after a slice of the high-end market. So guys, a look to the future? The UK has been respected around the world now. We might not have the quantity and numbers that Paris has, but we, we really have the quality. We have some fantastic chocolatiers who, who, who match the best in the world. Being a pastry chef, baker, chocolatier is just, it's my calling if you want to say that. It is something that I, I never feel like it is work. It is something that uh, my heart is totally into. So chocolate has just become a way of life for me and I enjoy the artistic side of, of working with chocolate. There's no limitations. And I think today you've had the opportunity to see a little bit of that magic we have here.